Hello friends, it's me Doom, and we are back today on the wonderful Emerald Lake. Uh, yes, I'm still here for my live stream. That's because I'm I'm getting up money to do the uh, the next step. And I know I said, well, at least to the people in the live stream, that there's going to be a specific fish coming up next. But I figured since I was here and since we learned so many things on the live stream, that we'd check out how to catch walleye at night, which actually seems to be more productive than during the morning. A few of you friends have already figured this out, but we're going to be using my technique for morning at night. Before we get started, I want to give a special shout out to a whole bunch of folks that showed up for uh, a whole lot of you guys actually showed up for the live stream. Uh, if, you could, if you didn't make it this time, don't worry. This Tuesday, I'm actually going to be doing a new live stream and we're going to be going after something a bit bigger than walleye. So as always, I'm going to break this down into three simple steps for you. We're going to be talking about location, gear, and finally the retrieve. So let's get started, shall we? So the location is going to be right here, the Pier of Peace. Nope, Dock of Peace. Sorry, still getting it wrong. No, wait, before we start, there's one thing that you should always do, no matter what, and that's go in and buy the advanced license. Why, you ask? Because, hang on, let me get back to it. If you don't, it's a 2,000 credit fine for catching anything. So remember, don't let the devs get one over on you. So, like I was saying, the Dock of Peace. We're going to be casting out here, and this is my personal favorite spot. It's actually right over here, right where it turns into that nice aqua green. And then, uh, or emerald green, I suppose. Um, there's another spot right here, which I happen to like. And there's another spot that was shown to me by Brian, uh, someone who caught my live stream, and it's right over here. So we're going to be casting out those three locations. We're going to be using the same technique as I do in the morning, like I said earlier, but we're going to touch on that in a moment. Let's go ahead and cover that gear. Now this is my setup. You don't necessarily have to have a Featherlight 7 foot with a Callisto MG, was that 3000? Like this is literally just minimal stuff. I just wanted to make sure I could get as much XP from these fish as possible so I could hurry up and get to level 40. But whatever you do bring, make sure it can at least handle an 8 pound test line. Make sure that the max drag can handle at least 8 pounds of drag. Um, the, uh, you know, and the, the rod can handle this guy, which is the main component to this. And that is the narrow spoon, 1 4th ounce, number 1 ot. That's this guy right here. And the, the amylite, in, in particular, the purple one. He's my favorite. Now, when it comes to time, what we're actually going to be doing here is I'm going to be spending a gold or so because I am about right here, and I need to be right here at this nice fat peak at night. So, we're going to go ahead, we're going to spend a gold to make that happen. So, I was talking to a friend of mine named Sifros who plays this game, and actually he was helping me test out a few things. I asked him to test out a few things, really. And he was like, yeah, sure. So, that was cool. And, um... He says that they strike more during the early hours of the night versus the later hours of the night. However, during the live stream, we found out that they strike just fine at the uh, at the late part of the night. So, perhaps, just whenever there's a peak at night, that's when it's best to fish for these guys. It's just on peak hours at night. So let's give this a shot. We're actually going to be covering multiple retrieves today because my original retrieve works, however... There's no, another retrieve, blah, I cannot speak, that works just as well. It's another thing we found out during the live stream. You guys really need to show up during these live streams. I'm just saying. We find out a lot of things. There's much science done. And it always works. It's just not always what I expect. Alright, so I'm setting my real speed to a 2 and what we're going to be doing is we're going to start out with a retrieve that isn't mine, which seems to work just fine. So, retrieve speed at 2. We're going to be letting it sit there for a minute. And it's going to be a simple one-time lift and drop. So basically, we're going up, we're looking around, we're finding food, and then coming back down. And then immediately, no time at all, look at that. Got a bite going there. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Mr. Lonzy Gaming um, 
is the one that inspired me to try this in the first place. Thank you very much, Lonzi. And right off the bat, nice little walleye. I'm going to be doing two or three of these, and then we're going to switch over to the next retrieve, which is going to be um, the same retrieve as the How to Catch Walleye video that I already have posted from a few months ago. Remember, key here is to let it sit for a little bit. Not long, maybe about 10 seconds. So uh, I guess we can go ahead and get started here. Already, boom. All right, so now that we've covered that retrieve, let's go ahead and try this other retrieve out, the same one that I use in the morning video. And for that, we're going to switch to a real speed of three, and it's just going to be a simple stop and go. Reeling three times each time. There's a bit of a difference on this one, and that is sometimes you're going to have to be keeping an eye on, on the gauges there because there will be strikes that occur, or opportunities to make a strike. Like a fish will start carrying it off, and you'll have to pop it up and set the hook and whatnot. Now, as you can see, obviously this retrieve works just fine as well. Um, I had a bit of trouble with it on the, uh, on the live stream, but... Um, since then, oh, new personal record. Oh, that's a big one. Nice. Had a bit of trouble with it on the live stream, but it works just fine. Boom. There he is. <laughs> Another big one, too. Nice. So this, at night, seems to be the best time to fish for walleye. Um... That's something I didn't know when I made the last video, so my bad. In fact, this is the first video I've done night fishing at all. Now, let me show you some of these other spots right quick, then we'll do a review. So here we are. We'll be right here on the corner. Now, remember, these are my spots, and if you happen to have spots that you think are better, that's fine. You don't necessarily have to use my spots, but I like them. So we're going to be casting out at the far reeds, the far light green reeds, and or this large rock with moss on it, possibly. I can't tell. It's a little dark at the moment. That's my favorite spot. Now, there are other spots. For example, this giant maple right here, over to the left, right about nya, at this tree. And then my friend Brian showed me that there's another spot right here. There's a giant... There's a... Let's see here, the reeds right here, the rock right here, right in between. We're just going to be casting right out into there. Let's go ahead and try it right quick. Let's see what happens. And sure enough, there it is. It's working just fine. Now remember, don't fish too long in one spot, because eventually you'll the, that spot will run out of fish. That is a feature of this game. It does reset every so often. I can't tell you how, how often it resets, because I haven't quite figured it out. I'd say one real-life hour, if I had to take a wild guess. Now, something to, uh, another thing to remember is this isn't the only way to go after walleye. You can also go after walleye with, let's see here. That's a bit big. There we go. All right, we're going to go with small minnows, a uh, number three odd hook, and uh, a large bobber, obviously. Let's see here. What we're going to be doing, though, is we're going to be going to about 70 inches, which is about 170 centimeters, if I'm not mistaken. All right, so we're going to go ahead and use Mr. Brian's spot here, and we're going to do this because there's something I wanted to show you. Because not always does this game make too terribly much sense. As you can see, if you look over at my at my bobber gauge, that uh, the bobber is kind of sideways, and that's because the bait is laying on the ground, so 70 inches is a bit much, but I'll tell you something. It doesn't matter. If it's resting on the ground and it's a bottom feeding fish, or a middle feeding fish that looks downwards for prey, then eventually it will be bitten. See? Bait was pulled too far away, fish is gone. There was a fish attracted to it, that means. 
you can use this technique all over the lake and that, that, that's the only one of those three spots that it really drags the bottom on. So if you don't feel comfortable dragging the bottom, which, you know, I understand. I don't like dragging the bottom either. But, you know, it actually does work over there. And that's kind of cool, I thought. I thought I'd share that little insight with you. But that's going to be Small Minnows with a hook number three lot. So let's end this episode with a little review, shall we? So when it comes to time, nighttime, anytime, during a peak hour is the best time to catch these guys. Of course, we're going to be out here on the Dock of Peace, casting outwards towards this area, this area, and this area. The gear we're going to be using is going to be, and it doesn't have to be this gear. Here you can see this gear here. I have a, a Featherlight 7-foot a Callisto MG3000, which is basically just enough for 8-pound test line. As you can see there, and there, 3 through 9. Uh, but the reason I brought this guy out is because I wanted to get the best cast I could with this little tiny lure. And also, it's so light that the experience that it gives you, uh, or the fight that it gives you, gives you the best experience. And finally, the lure we're going to be using is going to be the Narrow Spoon 1 4th ounce Amolite number 1 odd. All right, guys, so if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button for me. It, it means a lot. What it means even more, though, is hitting that subscribe button if you're not subscribed. And don't forget to check us out on our next live stream where you and I can have, have a personal little video. If, if you have a question about any lake that I happen to be on, you know, let me know. And I'll be glad to answer it or do a little, you know, custom little test for you, a little bit of science, and we'll, uh, we'll figure it out. We're done here, but questions still remain. What's the next fish I'm going to go after? Is it going to be big? Is it going to be blue? Is it going to be a catfish? Who knows? You can find out the answers to those and more on the next episode of Fountain Gaming!